If you have your Bibles, you can turn to Romans chapter 12, verse 10. Romans chapter 12, verse 10. It says, Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love. In honor, preferring one another. Now, preferring is not tolerating. Preferring is not tolerating. If I prefer you, come on, I'm almost going to get to the heart of the matter this morning. It means I'm putting you before myself. The Bible says a man keeps his word to his own hurt. Do you want to know why most people are struggling 24-7? Well, especially in America. You want me to tell you? Because we're very selfish. And we're very self-centered. And everything we do concerns us or how it affects us or what it's going to do to us. <coughs> but you want me to tell you the fix for that? I'm just going to be real simple this morning. Learning to prefer others before yourself. Learning to say, you know, how, how does this affect them? Why? What can I do to help them? Not how can they help me or how is this going to affect me or why why I should do it this way. But how, how to help them. You know, I wouldn't be a very good pastor, would I, if I didn't prefer others before myself? Think about that for a moment. I don't have time for you today. I've got things to do. Come on. You owe me $125 for that counseling session. You want two minutes long. It's going to be another 100 bucks an hour for that. You know. Come on. When you, when you prefer others before yourself, you don't count the cost. And if you're going to be, if we're going to, listen, we've been having some phenomenal moves of God, right? But do you know what happens whenever the, move, the Spirit of God starts moving as strong as it's been moving here? I'm going to go ahead and just cut to the chase and tell you, because it's where a lot of you are at right now. The dross starts coming to the top. When the heat gets poured on, the dross comes to the top. And then everybody wants to shut off the heat. I've had enough. And then the, what happens? The move of God stops because you know what? You don't want nobody. I don't like what I'm seeing. So let's just go back to how it was. And if you're, you're either going forwards or you're going backwards, there's no middle ground with God. And one of the best ways to fix that is to start preferring others before yourself. Do you know that's hard to do? Has anybody in here ever had road rage? Don't raise your hand. <laughs> I mean, that jerk, I'll teach them a lesson. You know, the person that just cut you off and not put you to the wall and into the semi, and now they're trying to get around you and you have to make your mind up. In. And there's, a, there's another truck right there. And you can let them over. But bless God, they're not getting over. <laughs> I'm going to hold them right there and I'm going to put them about 10 laps back. I did not prefer them. Come on. I mean, you know, as parents, a lot of it should be. It's not this way, unfortunately, today in America. But it should be easy to at least prefer your children. If it came down to who gets the last piece anymore, my name, if it's down to just a few, my name's out of the hat. Now, my kids, uh, they'll prefer me and want dad to have. No, you guys just take it. It's okay. But what about if you started doing that with everybody around you? Because that's what kind of preferring God is asking us to have. Come on, we're just having a dad chat this morning. I'm sitting down. Come on. When you prefer others before yourself, it'll change you for the better. But as long as the enemy is getting you to count the cost, you're not preferring others. You're just seeing, keeping a tally sheet. How is this going to affect me? What am I going to get from this? Is this worth my investment? Because that is how you're taught to look at everything. My time is valuable. Whose time? My time. Is this worth my investment? Well, the Bible says we'll be known by our fruit. I've got to get the best fruit. Well, guess what? The Bible said bloom where he, 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 we go where God goes. Listen, where he tells us to go. That doesn't always mean that 
it, things happen the way you think should happen. Remember how I just talked about it? Your job is to do what God tells you to do, preferring one another. If you're preferring someone, you're not, well, I don't think you're responding well enough. I'm going to have to move on. Sorry. I'm done with you. Come on. What would it be like if Jesus or if real men and women of God treated you that way? Well, you don't know what they've done to me, Pastor. You're right, I don't. But I know what they did to Jesus. I know what they've done to me. So I know what God wants me to do to you. Now, does that mean I open myself up for abuse? No, that's not what I'm talking about. That's a whole other message. Come on. Because you have something that they need. Did you know that? If you're above the ball, believe it or listen, I'm going to talk to some mature believers this morning, and then I'm going to come back to some that are just starting the faith, and then I'm going to come back and hit you in the middle. So, y'all just wait for your piece of the pie, and we'll get there, all right? Romans chapter 1, verse 16. Romans 1, 16. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Do you know what? If we were not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, America would already be saved and in revival. Amen. The first time that the, the Lord spoke to me, uh, he was asking me to go door knocking. Door knocking, in case you don't know, I'll just tell y'all, for the, when you first do it, it's one of the most intimidating things you'll ever do, especially in this climate, because you're going to get cussed out, the door slammed in your face. But listen, we did it in the hood. I just had some ministers over there knocking where our old church used to be at, and they said, they still remember you all over there following. They love you all. I said, oh, praise God. They said, then they told us we were crazy and we need to get out there before we get shot. Uh -huh. And they said, they said, you guys did this all the time. I said, we did. Why? Because if you're ashamed of him, he'll be ashamed of you. Well, I'm not ashamed of him. When was the last time you have the good news? The gospel is the good news. That means that once you were once one way and now you're another way because you got a hold of Jesus and Jesus got a hold of you. And he changed you from the inside out. Each person in this room is in a different place, but you're at a different place because someone somewhere was not ashamed of the gospel and they shared the gospel with you and the gospel changed you from the inside out. But only you can share it. Well, I'm not ashamed of him. Then when was the last time that you shared the good news? The, when it's the good news, it's not, let me tell you about Jesus. <laughs> well, you can be saved. Let me take you down the Roman road. Here, I have a pamphlet. <laughs> the good news is, man, I was once lost but now I'm saved. I was once bound, but now I'm free. Amen. I was once a drug addict, but I'm no more. I was once this, but now I'm a man of God. Why? Because the good news is that he who the sun sets free is free indeed. There's liberty. There's freedom. All these things happen. It's the good news. Amen. I need to go tell somebody about it. But I can't tell them about it if I'm all jacked up in my heart and I'm not preferring you because I won't be thinking about that you're dying and going to hell unless I just happen to be on a good day and listen to that sermon from Pastor Brian on Tuesday. Now I got you got about an hour before it wears off. <laughs> Come on. Oh, you know I'm preaching this morning. The good news. You have it. They need it. We've got to give it. But you know what? The Bible talks about whenever you've lost your flavor. A salt that's lost its flavor. The world needs salt. Well, you lost your flavor when you forget about what the good news is for you. Whenever you forget what changed you. When you stop being thankful for what he did for you. Come on, we talked about it last week. Come on. 
I'll sit down for a minute before Pastor Teddy comes up here and yells at me. <laughs> I've been jumped off nothing yet. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that comes to church on Sunday. Is that what it says? No. To everyone that believeth. To the Jew first, and also to the Greek. I praise God for that. For therein is the righteous God revealed from faith to faith is written, the just shall live by faith. Didn't say he can live by your feelings. Get off the emotional roller coaster. You live by faith. Faith in what? Faith in the word of God. Faith that God is who he says he is, can do what he said he can do. And that word gospel there in verse 16 means the good news. You have the good news. Right? Whenever you start thinking about the good news, when I just got up and preached a little bit to you and exhorted you, what happened to your spirit? It went straight up, didn't it? The good news went, woo, glory. And all of a sudden, you started getting happy inside. Do you know that will happen wherever you prefer somebody else and share the good news with them? A lot of people think, well, I've got a schedule today. I'm going to go witnessing today. Listen, you can witness it when your feet hit the floor every morning. When my kids get, listen, I'm not bragging. Uh, God showed me this the other day. You know, when I get up every day, anybody that knows me knows my mornings belong to the Lord. I'm going to pray. I'm going to read my word and all those things. But guess what my kids do too? You know what my kids do when they get up in the morning? They pray, read their Bible, they get it done. And because that's what they, what you do. It's not foreign to them. It's not something that's worked up. And if you're on the Bible plan with them, that's all the things they write and get out of there themselves. If you've read, read them, they're, they're not just uh, going through the motions. Well, that happened because they seen me prefer the Lord before anything else in my life. I'm not trying to build me up. Do you see what I'm saying? You're leaving a legacy right now. Right now, you're living your dash between your beginning and the end. When people read your dash, what are they going to say about you? What are they going to say? What legacy are you leaving? You know, if they, some people like me, some people hate me, you know, but at least some of them are talking about me, I guess. <laughs> but either way, I hope they can say, you know what? I didn't always understand him, but I know he loved Jesus. And I knew he loved me, even though sometimes he wanted to smack me. <laughs> Come on. Anybody, we're just getting started. Anybody with me this morning? Yeah. Anybody in here? Listen, I, I'm going to tell you, like I said, if you're in here this morning and I start talking about that good news and something your spirit left and you said, you know what, I think I could use some of that. I could use a start over, a do over. I could use a make over in my life. I'm going to give you an opportunity before the day's over today to give your heart to Jesus and you can have one for yourself. What's the point of talking about the good news without giving you an opportunity to get it? Come on. You say, well, that sounded pretty good to me. Well, good. It should. It's great stuff, man. It doesn't make everything perfect, but it sure takes you perfectly through everything. Here's the next thing I want to drop in your spirit this morning. I don't care where you're at, what you're going through, what you're dealing with. One touch from Jesus can change everything. One touch. You heard me talk, I'm going to read the, read the story here in a moment. You heard me re, uh, talk about the woman with the issue of blood. She, she, she risked everything. A woman that had those kind of things was not supposed to be out in public. Expect, if they were caught touching a rabbi, they were dead. They were killed. She risked her life to get a hold of Jesus. Some people won't even risk getting out of bed on Sunday. Yeah. 
So you're being harsh, Pastor. No, listen, if you want something you've never had, you're going to have to do something you've never done before. If you want to move of God, if you're tired of hearing about things and you want to experience the things of God, you're going to have to start doing some things you've never done. Well, they're going to cause me a, call me a fanatic. Well, praise God, they call Jesus that too. I'll never forget the first time I got called a Jesus freak. They really thought they offended me. I wore it like a badge of honor, man. Woo! I'm a Jesus freak. I don't mean, now listen, here's the kicker. There was a time in my life if you'd have called me that, I'd have beat you to death. <laughs> I'm just telling you. Are you with me this morning? Listen, one touch can change everything, but you have to have your expector connected to your believer, and you have to be willing to put it all on the line. Or you can sit there and focus on yourself and never get nowhere and be stuck in a rut. Or you can be even worse than that. You can be going backwards and dying. And we're going to talk about that in a moment. But you get to just choose. And this morning, you can choose. I would choose a touch from, you know what, I've chosen over, and it's not been a one-time choice. There's been uh, many times I've had to choose, Lord, I need a touch from you. Lord, I, you know, when you've done all you can do, the Bible says stand. What are you standing on? I'm standing on the promises of God that they're yes and amen. When that lady reached out, she grabbed a hold of the hem of Jesus' garment. The hem where the rabbis, where they did, that was where it was, a, it, was a, it was blue woven embroidery, and it represented the word of God. She literally reached out and grabbed a hold of the word of God. Let that sink into you for a moment. If you have a problem, find it in the word. The solution to every issue in life is in the word of God. And then stand on it until it comes to fruition. But don't be shocked sometimes that instead of him changing your situations, he changes you. Luke 8, 40. It came to pass that Luke 8, 40. And when it came to pass when Jesus returned, the people gladly received him, for they were all waiting for him. So, just for the record, they were all there, and some would say they were all expecting something from Jesus. They had showed up to service. They couldn't wait to be in his presence. Come on. Praise God, Pastor, I'm here today. Let's see if Jesus can bless me. But that's how most people come to church. Well, I pray I get spill the anointing today. Let's see what he's got. Now, you wouldn't say it that brash, but that's how people come. I hope Pastor Tammy and brought Pastor Brian's got their act together today. <laughs> I really need a touch from Jesus. Mm. <laughs> Feel a little something. I think Jesus is here. Look, they all knew Jesus was there. But not all of them had their expectors connected to their believers. Not all of them made a withdrawal. But they were all there. Someone say, why are we not seeing miracles today? Why have I not had a change in my life? I know that Je I know Jesus. I, I know who he is. I can tell when Jesus is around. Yes, but you've not put a demand upon it. You've not made a withdrawal. You've not had your expector connected to your believer to a point where you're willing to risk your life. You're willing to put it all on the line. It doesn't matter. And you're going to stay there until something happens. Well, I did it for a while. Man, what would happen if those in the upper room had said that? I did it for a while. He didn't show. I'm out of here. Come on. Verse 41. Behold, there came a man named Jairus, and he was the ruler of the synagogue. He fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him that he would come into his house. And for he had one only daughter, about 12 years of age, and she lay dying. But as he went, the people thronged him. And a woman have an issue of blood 12 years, which had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any, came behind him and touched the border of his garment, and immediately her issue of blood stopped. And Jesus said, Who touched me? 
When all denied, Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude throng thee and press thee, and thou sayest, Who touched thee? Everybody's touching you. Everybody's trying to get something from you. They all showed up to see you, Jesus. What do you mean, who touched you? Some would say she was like the third monkey getting on the earth. <laughs> it's okay to laugh. And Jesus said, somebody had touched me for I perceive that virtue is going out of me. When was the last time when you made your mind up? If God said it, I believe it, and I'm going to hold on to it until I receive it. Amen. And then tell everybody else about the good news. And then prefer others before yourself. Are you getting the message this morning? Yes, the pastor, as we've been having these foes of God, all this stuff keeps coming up, and I don't like it, and I don't want to work on it no more. I just want to stop here. Well, I'm going to tell you two things. Number one, suck it up, buttercup. <laughs> Number two is that the God that made heaven and earth that gave his only begotten son that loved you so much to do that is not trying to torture you. He's trying to heal you. Amen. Same as if I, if you had a big old thorn in your side or a big old piece of steel even stuck in your side and I left that in there and didn't pull it out, the infection would just get worse and worse. It's not going to be fun pulling that out of there. It's going to be very uncomfortable. But it can't heal until that foreign thing is out. So stop being resentful when God is bringing things to the top. Because he's trying to heal you. Come on. So. And when the woman saw that she was not his, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared unto him before all the people for what cause she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. And he said unto her, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace. And while he yet spoke, there came, there cometh one from the ruler of the synagogue's house, saying, Thy daughter is dead. Trouble not the master. Well, it's too late. Somebody else got to him first. I can't get mine now. He only does one healing a day. Come on, but how many times have you been that way? Well, they got theirs. I'll stop trying. That's where Jesus, that's all he's doing today. Maybe next Sunday. I don't believe that father was good. If it was your kid, would that have been enough? Would you said, no, I'm done? But when Jesus heard the answer and said, Fear not, believe only, and she shall be made whole. And when he came into the house, he suffered no man to go in, save Peter, James, and John, the father and the mother of the maiden. And all wept and bewailed her. But he said, Weep not, she is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn, knowing that she was dead. Now, could you imagine laughing in Jesus' face? Talk about unbelief. And he only let the ones go in that even had some faith. The rest of them he kicked out. The rest of them were there. So then what did he do? He's like, he took thought, you know, as, as we like pastor, I, I, I thought I was taking the ones that had some faith with me to help get this thing done, and they end up being a pain in the butt, so I'm going to kick everybody out. I'm just shooting it to you straight. Come on. And he put them all out, took her by the hand, and called, saying, Maid, arise. And her spirit came again, and she arose straightway, and he commanded to give her meat. And her parents were astonished, but he charged them that they should tell no man what was done. The next one you're probably not going to like as much. Luke chapter 9, verse 62. Luke chapter 9, verse 62. And Jesus said unto him, No man, having put his hand to the plow, looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. You know the children of Israel when they were brought out, they got halfway through the desert. God brought them out supernaturally. 
I mean, he did all kinds of supernatural acts. I mean, you know, if you've seen signs and wonders and miracles around here, praise God. They're kind of like that. They've seen all of these things, but when it got rough, they were ready to go back to leeks and garlics. Let's go back to slavery. It's better than being free out here in this. And the enemy still does the same thing today. He'll, you, God will spectacularly bring you forth. He'll get you out to that place where he's working on you. And then the, the enemy will try to say, let's just go back to slavery. At least you knew you're, what you were going to get fed every day, even if it was trash. Come on. He's still doing it. But God says, if you look back, you're not fit for the master's use. I still never forget the first time he brought this one home. That, that means there's only one way forward. Once you put your hand to the plow, you don't turn back. You don't look back. You know, a farmer, when they put their hand to the plow, they, they, how many know they like they proud themselves? That maybe not so much anymore. It's all GPS control. But they used to proud, take down home. They still do it the old way. And they, they take pride in straight roads, man. But you can't make a straight road when you're looking backwards. That's right. Your path won't be straight. Y'all still here? I don't even remember Lot's wife. Yeah, the Lord gave him one thing. He saved them from all of those things. And he said, I only got one thing for you. Don't look back. 